Hey, what's up? This is Václav. I have just finished new Home Assistant video, and this video is about how I use Home Assistant. I'm gonna show you everything end to end, all the controls from lights, heating, security cameras, uh, multimedia, 3D printing, my electric car, all the controls, all the screens. But I'm not gonna only show you how they look like, but I'm gonna also show you how I did that. I'm gonna deep dive into configuration as I usually do in my videos. Now, you're gonna ask me how it's possible to make such videos so it's not hours long because I've been making those videos for over a year now and each of them is focused on single topic and yet they usually about half an hour long or even longer. Now, the way I did that is I'm referring to all of those videos I've done previously for the back-end configuration. So I'm focusing mainly on the controls, on the front-end, on the dashboards. And there is one area I didn't touch, and this is multimedia. And it was making the job quite difficult because I was explaining all the controls and all the buttons and what they run and all the automations behind. And it's difficult to do without explaining how it works on the back end, how do I start streaming uh, to all those uh, Chromecast devices and all the remote controls, infrared codes and so on. So I decided I'm gonna put this video on hold, I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna make this video first where I'm gonna talk about multimedia only, I'm gonna show you my setup. And after I publish this one, a few days later, I'm going to publish the end-to-end -end video about the front-end interface. So, let's get started. Well, let's get started. Let's get started. Before we get started, uh, I think I'd like to still have a chat about why is it I didn't make those videos uh, about multimedia yet. And I think there are two main reasons. And the first is, you know, I have this thing that uh, I like to be able to control things not only from Home Assistant, but also uh, in the regular way, like the wall switches can control lights and, and so on. Turns out for multimedia, I control multimedia most of the time using those other controls. So when I want to play music, uh, rather than searching for my phone and opening Home Assistant and searching through some uh, interface and trying to do things, I just usually say that to my Google Assistant and I just say, hey, uh, play so-and-so uh, radio station or, or Spotify playlist. And I found it much easier. And if I have my phone, then usually I would just open Spotify and uh, in Spotify I can search for even things I do not have included in my home assistant and uh, I can stream it to the radio directly from there. Same thing for radio stations. I have tune in so I could uh, search for different radio stations and play it directly from my phone uh, and there is no point. But still, there are few situations where I use the Home Assistant, specifically in the bedroom. I have a few favorite uh, radio stations that uh, I trigger from Home Assistant, the streaming to the uh, specifically Sonos station. And uh, connected to the TV, there is a few automations that are there. So I still have some basic stuff. But this is why this is basic. Uh, and so this comes to the second reason, which is most of the videos I did is I thought they are kind of unique breakthrough. They, they add a lot of value. They have something that not many people have. And I thought I'll be proud to share it so you could get inspired and copy it. But for multimedia, I'm pretty sure that there are other people who have more advanced stuff, multimedia rooms and uh, latest high-end devices. Uh, in their uh, houses. So I don't have that. Uh, so what I really have is uh, I have uh, this Sonos in the bedroom. Then I have a uh, couple of Google Chromecasts. Uh, one is connected to this uh, Denon receiver in the living room. Uh, and it's really like a 15 year old device. I thought a few times about upgrading it, but I never find reason because it plays quite well. But it's not connected to internet, it's difficult to automate. And that's why I automate it uh, through infrared, uh, through the Broadlink uh, infrared 
uh, device. So I'm going to show you how it's configured and how it could be done. And it actually uh, reacts on events triggered by, for example, the LG Smart TV. So the Smart TV is pretty good, actually. And uh, it's integrated in Home Assistant. So there's a custom integration. And based on uh, some changes I do in the TV, even from the regular remote, it will know that I have switched to specific program uh, or turn the TV on, turn the TV off. And I could uh, react on those triggers and control the Denon. So I'm going to show you that. So I think uh, to explain my multimedia, uh, let's start with the dashboard. There's really three parts on my multimedia setup. First is I have a couple of speakers. Uh, so what I can do is I can stream uh, music, either radio stations or Spotify playlist to any combination uh, of those speakers. So this is the Sonos speaker in the bedroom. Uh, then I have the uh, Google Chrome uh, Chromecast in the uh, in the main room, which also automatically controls the Denon receiver. So when I activate this one, it will turn the receiver on and it will switch it to the proper input. And when I turn it off, it will turn it off. And I can control the volume from there as well. So that's that. And then I have some Google Assistants, which I mainly use to do voice control of different things. Um, but I can also use it to play music, even though the quality is uh, not really great. So that's that. Then I have a number of uh, streaming sources. So I have a list of favorite radio stations or Spotify lists. Uh, so I have it there and it plays part in the automation I'm going to show you. And I'm going to share it with you so you could use that. Uh, then the second part is the smart TV. Uh, this is LG Smart TV. It has integration. It has a custom remote, so I can control it remotely from my phone. I do not use this uh, integration uh, to control the TV from my phone a lot, because obviously it's much more convenient to control it from the dedicated remote in the room. But I can do it. Uh, it has some uh, advantages. So I could a change function of some buttons and presets so this is great like TV stations but I use it mainly uh, as a trigger to trigger other things and to control this Denon uh, receiver which is the third part of my audio setup uh, so this is what we're gonna be talking about quite a bit so let's start with the uh, speakers let me show you how they're configured and uh, their configuration is pretty simple. Uh, they're automatically discovered and uh, added to the integrations. So I have uh, seven Google Class devices, uh, different speakers. So for example, the one here in the uh, office, that's the device, media player, and uh, this is the one we use. Then we have the Chromecast devices. So uh, the one in the living room, this is this one. So this is the media player living room connected to Denon. So they're discovered, they're added here and I can just use them. On top of that, I have uh, this Sonos device in the bedroom. Again, it was discovered automatically and that's the device. So it's media player bedroom. And uh, whilst we're speaking about integrations, I also have this Broadlink uh, remote that's been also automatically uh, discovered and uh, the entity ID is remote broadlink remote so these are all the devices we're gonna be using so these are the speakers now what we can do with them so I made this uh, script or automation that uh, allows me to uh, stream preset of different radio stations or uh, Spotify playlists to a combination of those devices and control them, turn them on, turn them off, uh, turn the volume and so on. So let me show you uh, how it's done. So I have those uh, controls in here, the three buttons that turn on and off different media sources, the list of radio stations and the volume. So if I look at my automation, this is first thing I do. I define those helpers. So there's those three buttons. There is one for the Denon, which I'm using later on. Then there is the input number and then the input select, which defines a list of all the radio stations. 
Then I have an automation that is triggered by change of the state of one of those three buttons from off to on. So when I press one of those buttons, it will trigger this automation. I'm also triggering it when I change the radio station because essentially what it does is it will turn on streaming of this radio station to the uh, list of those uh, media players. Then, because I can have one or combination of media players selected, I use a variable that I define in the beginning of this automation. And uh, what I do is I first create a list of the media players which are turned on. So I create an empty list first and then I check that if the state of the input boolean living room is on, then I append this media player to that list. I do the same for the bedroom and I do the same for the uh, office. And at the end, I will basically uh, convert this list into a comma separated list. So let me, let me show you how it works so you better understand. So I'm gonna just uh, take it to Home Assistant and I'm going to go here to test. Currently the buttons are off, uh, so it does nothing, but if I would just remove those conditions, uh, it will be media play the living room then on. If I remove the second condition, it will append the bedroom. And uh, if I add the third one, it will append the third one as well. So this is how it creates the list. It will create a list like that and then the join is uh, converting it to a comma separated list. So this is how I create this variable. And then I have the actions. First, if I'm turning on the living room, this one is the Denon device. So I have to call the infrared blaster to send the commands to turn it on. So I have that in a script, which we're gonna cover in a second. So I have a condition, if the input boolean living room is on, then I'm calling this script. Then I have an automation that is triggered by changing the volume, but I want to reuse this automation to set the volume initially here as well. So I'm just calling in that. And then finally, I will start streaming. So the streaming is either the uh, Spotify. So I say if Spotify is in the list of radio stations, so if it contains the keyword Spotify, then I will call the service podcast start as an entity ID, I will use this variable we have defined in here. And then as an URL, we will use the Spotify string so I can create this list of uh, Spotify stations I like. Otherwise, if it doesn't include Spotify, there is the default. And it will do is it'll say media player, play media. Again, as entity ID, it will use the variable we have defined. And as a media content ID, uh, it will uh, use the streaming URL. How did I find out the streaming URL? So I can use the TuneIn website to figure out the URLs and I'm gonna search for a random radio station. So I'm gonna look at the NRJ in France and uh, I can just play it. I will turn the volume down. And uh, so now it's playing, I'm streaming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, open the developers tool panel. And in here, I'm going to search control F for a string JP audio. So this is the JP audio and there is a link. So if I just copy this URL in here, this is the URL I'm gonna use uh, in my automation. I can test that if I like. I can call the service media player, play media. I can select uh, my office assistant as a content ID. I'm gonna uh, paste this URL. And in here, I'm going to say it's music. And if I say call service, it will start playing on my uh, Google Assistant here next to me. Hey Google, stop. So I know it works. So I'll stop this one and I'm gonna go back to the script. So this is what, uh, what it does with the radio stations and I'm using this podcast uh, integration here 
for Spotify. Then there is uh, another automation for the opposite when I change the state from on to off. And what I'm doing here is simply call media player stop of this particular uh, media player. If it's living room, then I'm calling uh, the script that will uh, send the infrared command to turn the Denon off as well. So that's the automation for turning on and turning on the radio and for changing the radio station. Then I have one for uh, changing the volume uh, and I'm calling this one also when I turn the radio on, so you saw that. And what it does is it will just call media player set volume and it will send it to those uh, media players that are supposed to be turned on. Then the script to turn on and off the Denon, they'll be here in the scripts at the end. And uh, so the one to turn Denon on, uh, all it does is it calls a service remote send command. It will use the blaster remote bro link remote and it'll send command turn on to the device Denon. Then what it'll do is it'll wait five seconds just for the receiver to turn on and then it'll send it another command to switch the input to CD. I have a similar command that I use when the TV is turned on and that's exactly the same except that it switches the uh, input to TV. Then to turn off it uh, sends the command then on turn off. Where do we find those commands? I'll, I'll show you in a couple of seconds how Home Assistant can learn the commands from the original remote. But before that, I'm going to show you that in here, uh, in the storage, there is a file, uh, Broadlink Remote Codes. And in here, I have the code, so I'm calling those. It's then on, turn on, turn off, CD. These are the ones we were using. So this one is already using the Broadlink uh, Infrared Blaster, so uh, let's uh, play with that. Let me show you how to program it and, and how to use it. And the easiest way to do it is to call the service Remote Learn Command. And the easiest is to call them from the developer tools. So I'm going to just pick the command here in the targets. I'm going to pick the entity Broadlink Remote, then assign the device. So this is my Denon. It will be grouped by that and really name the command. So I'm gonna name it uh, speaker because I'm gonna learn the command to change the speakers. And with that, then I'm gonna just call the service. And as soon as I do that, the light on the Broadlink blaster is going to turn on. And then all I need to do is to pick up the remote, point it to this Broadlink remote and push the button. And the light is going to go off to confirm that the command has been successfully learned. So now we can uh, see the command. So I'm gonna open the Broadlink remote codes. And as you can see, there is a new line with the speaker and the command we have just learned. Then the TV. So I have this remote on the screen so I could control the TV uh, from the screen, turn it on, turn it off, change programs, change volumes. It's kind of cool, but uh, I could also trigger automations based on a change of the sensors linked to this uh, TV remote. And I do that to control the infrared blaster to control the Denon. So I could uh, turn this Denon on when I turn the TV on, change the input to the input where I have the TV connected to this optical cable. Uh, and when I change, for example, to HDMI, where I have the Xbox connected, it will change the input to yet another input where the Xbox is connected by another optical cable. So I do those things, uh, but I can also uh, turn those automations off. If I want to just use the internal speaker in the TV, uh, then I will just uh, turn off this input helper and uh, it won't bother with the multimedia. If, if I watch TV late at night and I don't want to wake people up, I just use the internal speaker and it's actually much easier to control it from the TV or remote because I can uh, control the volume uh, directly. So uh, let me show you how it's done. So let me turn the TV on and the Home Assistant LG integration will detect it in a couple of seconds. I will trigger the automation. 
the infrared blaster light will go on as you can see it uh, turned on the uh, Denon receiver and uh, after five seconds it will switch the input to TV then I'm gonna turn on the Xbox and the TV input will switch to HDMI 1 and Home Assistant integration will again detect it and it will switch the input to VCR 1 Finally, I'm gonna turn the TV off and Home Assistant will turn off the Denon as well. How is it done? Very easy. The first automation is triggered by the state of the media player TV. So this is the LG integration. When the attribute source is uh, switched to live TV, YouTube, uh, the internet TV, Netflix or HBO. So these are the triggers. Then I have a condition here by which I can disable this automation if I don't want to use the Denon Media Player. And the action really is remote send command. So again, the same command uh, to remote broadlink remote. And the command is TV and I'm sending it to the Denon. And after that, the Home Assistant is going to call the LG TV and switch the sound output to the optical cables. So it's gonna call the LG integration, the web OS TV service, select sound output of the entity media player TV to external optical. When I switch the state to HDMI 1, it does similar thing except that it will send the command to, to switch the output to VCR 1 instead of TV. And uh, when I turn the TV off, it will send the command to the Denon to turn it off. So that was my multimedia. I think it's pretty basic, nothing to write home about. But I think still there are a few things which you might find useful and uh, you might use maybe, if not for multimedia, maybe for other things. For example, this infrared blaster you could use to control your air conditioning based on temperature and presence in the house. You could control that to cool your house before you come home. I think it'd be pretty good use for that. Uh, so now you know how. And with that I will finish the video here and uh, I'll catch you in the next one which is gonna be about the uh, home assistant interface front end, how I use that, all the controls. So it'll be pretty cool and it'll be out in a few days because the video is already finished. Okay, see you there. Bye.